uh, everyone who had release plans during COVID, you know, really uh, had to think on the fly, you know, sure. so I had this album done right as COVID began, like it started 2020, this album was done, the other side album. And okay. what I had to do was make the decision when everything shut down, I was like, well, if we're going to be stuck inside, I might as well just dole out singles, you know, right. for a time. so I doled out seven singles over a year. And then after that seven singles, you know, that year I dropped the album. I'm Adam. Very nice to meet you. Uh, ditto, man. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, this is a podcast about you and uh, your journey in music. And we'll talk about uh, the new album that you have coming out as well. Killer. Killer, man. Cool. Um, I always start off. You're born and raised in West, West Virginia. I was born and raised in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Um, and, uh, you know, basically, you know, had sort of the, uh, old school sort of small town experience. Uh, and as soon as high school was over, I, ha I, uh, hightailed it down to Nashville. Oh, um, cool. Are you in Nashville now? Well, uh, not right now. I did a good solid, uh, few years there. And, uh, but most of the time I'm touring and I would just sort of bounce around sure. from Virginia to Nashville. But recently I've been in Los Angeles with my wife and Fair. just sort of bounce around from there. So, you know. Been all been all over the place. Not to mention New Mexico, of course, where yeah, where the record was recorded. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really intrigued to talk to you about that. Um, so West Virginia, do you come from a musical household at all, or uh, artistic in in any way like that? Well, um, my parents, they're both in real estate, and my uh, sister, she does other things. Uh, but my mom at a time was a show choir teacher uh, when I was a little, you know, toddler. Oh so wow. In, when I, you know, started school at five, she put us all in piano. That was sort of a thing that, you know, she just uh, did, I think it was a generational thing. She puts us in piano lessons. So that was my first introduction to music and I loved it. I hated, uh, you know, practicing and, and doing all that stuff, but uh, I, sure. I, loved, I loved doing my own thing. And, uh, but my dad had a good record collection. So uh, it was a nice fusion um, of the two, but I'd say, you know, it was a sort of a gentle nudge into music and, you know, uh, I asked to start learning guitar at, you know, eight, eight, nine years old. And I just sort of uh, went from there and kind of forged my own little path out. Right on. When uh, you got the guitar, did you take lessons for guitar or just kind of picked it up because you kind of had the bass from uh, playing I did. Piano? I took lessons. I took lessons for like seven, eight years. Wow. Um, I, I was one of those kids who liked to take in all sorts of lessons. I was like, give me, ban uh, give me banjo lessons. Give me mandolin lessons. Give me, give me harmonica lessons. And I did them all. Wow. Um, but it was good because, you know, I just had enough foundation from these masters just to sort of, you know, get a good uh, a good little something to build off. And, um, you know, nowadays when I'm in the studio, I'm I'm really glad just because I, you know, I'm, I'm plucking on everything I can. Right. Get, yeah. You know, making whatever noise I can. And I just want to be able to be able to do that. You know? Sure. Yeah. And I was going to say you could probably have an ear for a lot of different instruments that, that, that way as well. And kind of be like, oh, we should add this or it'd be cool to put this into the song or whatever yeah it keeps it keeps all those options open in your head all those thoughts firing you know for you, sure yeah. for sure so when did you start writing your own music was that early on as well well uh my first album um came out in 2014 and uh you know i just been out of school for about a year and a half at that point and i had you know you know a few songs from from you know those childhood teenage times that I carried with me through so it probably started when I was like 15 years old I started writing and just sort of filled up my own little bucket and when it came time to record you know I just spilled them all out wow and, and it, yeah how did that process like where did you record the album like was it something that you were just like oh, I'm gonna rent some studio time and and put these down or like how did that uh kind of happen I honestly was kind of one of the lucky ones but it also took a ton of hard work, of course. I, you know, my first semester of college, I, uh, I had a deal with my family, which was if I could get a record deal, I could, I could leave college. I had a <laughs> scholarship, and uh, I, I, I didn't really want to go. I wanted to just focus on music. So I had, you know, my first semester, I just sent countless emails and whatever it took to reach out to labels, management, whatever it was, but legitimate, mm -hmm. you know, people who could, you know, get me, fulfill my deal to get out. Um, and uh, I did. I, I luckily found some cool people and we went down to Nashville and, and they kind of sherpaed me through a few of the few of the levels. I, you know, with a nice um, 
uh, indie label that was a subsidiary of uh, Sony. And wow. uh, we put out my first two albums with them. I recorded my first one uh, with Dave Cobb, who's a fantastic producer. And oh, yeah, I know the name. For me. Great launch for me. And, um, you know, I'm a torn machine. So you made sure, uh, you know, I made sure to, you know, promote those records real hard. And I was always out grinding. I still am. Um, but since then, you know, um, I've worked with other producers and done my thing. Uh, but that first album and uh, EP that came with that album were uh, were very, uh, looking back, very special, very magical. And, uh, uh, you know, I owe a lot to the to the people around me and the good musicians and the great, uh, you know, minds uh, that helped me, you know, get on the path that I'm that I'm on now. Definitely. Uh, you mentioned getting a full ride. You said you got a full ride scholarship to college. W yeah. Was that for music or would you go to college? For it was for was academics, it? which oh, academics. blows my mind because I, <laughs> I don't think I did that great in high school. But I think I just I hit like a niche little thing, you know, for this specific, uh, I guess, for just a specific uh, college in high school. There was a scholarship that was uh, kind of molded for if you had my GPA going to this specific school that a couple kids at my high school got and you know, I felt really fortunate and yeah. obviously that made it tough to uh, say no, but um, you know, I need to probably take this moment to thank the people that let me copy off their math homework. So thanks. To <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I mean, to, you already knew what you wanted to do. It sounds like, I mean, to, to be like, okay, here's the deal. If I get a, if I get a record deal, I'm allowed to, to not do the college thing i mean it sounds like from early on even prior to getting that scholarship you knew what you wanted to do a hundred percent yeah no i knew uh and and so did my folks that's why they uh kind of made that deal with me but um yeah you know it's just you know if you're gonna do it you got to put all your eggs in one basket and that was my pitch uh, at that time when i was yeah. 17. <laughs> wow i know you i and i don't want to spend much time other than just asking quickly about it i know you did american idol a couple times and you made it, I mean, to the Hollywood week and all that stuff. Was that around that, like, what were you already doing? Like, were you out of college at that point or was that all prior to that happening? No, Idol was like when I was a child, man. I was 15. I was oh, wow. Okay. So <laughs> that was like, it was, it was, I, I didn't even know what I was doing yet. I just love, I was just playing ACDC at the house. You know, I didn't even like singing, <laughs> you know, it was just more oh, interesting. Like they were like, go do it, Christian. And then I went and I did it and, you know, it got me a lot of uh, regional notoriety and things, you know, even though I only had a couple glimpses, you know, they're making me sing Katy Perry songs and stuff and pink songs. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. It was, it, you know, it was more of like, it was like my first eye open, you know, experience at this whole thing. So I think the best thing that came from it was, uh, you know, at that time, it just gave me a boatload of gigs. And uh, I really grew that muscle because of that, it, uh, that notoriety. I'm just, yeah. back home, just playing like crazy and booked a ton of gigs and it's been nonstop since. But luckily, as I moved on, uh, into those years that we were just talking about uh, when I was in Nashville working with Dave. That was, uh, you know, the Idol luckily was more of a hometown splash and nationally really wasn't known that I was, I, I didn't get far enough for it to be known, you know, that I was on for, you know, for like people in Nashville. Right. So, uh, you know, it sort of, uh, you know, took a back seat and, you know, the songwriting and everything led, which is, I think is the right thing and how it should have been. And it was a nice blend of the two because right. at most it, you know, gave me the, the gigging muscle at a young age. Yeah, I was gonna say it probably um, maybe even benefited the fact that you didn't have that kind of stigma with you, right? I mean, some people they'll just know it's like, oh, it's Christian from American Idol. It's like mm -hmm. yeah, now it's like, oh, it's Christian Lopez, this singer songwriter who has achieved all these things, right? I mean, it was you, some people kind of get stuck with that label, and I feel like because the way you've done it, and you were so young at the time, like you weren't, you didn't kind of get caught up with that. Yeah. Yeah. And looking back, I was kind of glad about that, too, just because, you know, at the time I, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just holding the microphone and saying as loud <laughs> as I could see what happened. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I think it's all meant to be for sure. Sure. And then you put out Red Arrow. That was uh, the next album after Onward. And um, what would you say like a big highlight from that album was? Red Arrow uh, definitely was probably my um, uh, sort of that moment when I really felt the needle moving you know, in the right direction. We've sold a lot of tickets, um, you know, uh, my song Swim the River. Um, Massive. Kind of took a, uh, a good, uh, you know, kind of led the path for my streaming and, and, and sales, you know, kind of having a song that could go that direction. 
Um, and uh, yeah, just a lot of good things came from a good press. You know, just those things that us artists, you know, we're trying to, you know, just, you know, get a little further down the line. You know, we're not necessarily trying to, you know, have commercial success. We just want to, you know, you know, sell a couple more tickets at the next show and you know, just keep having a good time. So that that album definitely did that for me. And, uh, um, you know, looking back, uh, uh, I'm really, really, really proud of that one. Yeah, I did see just uh, to go move on to, kind of to your new album a little bit here, because I know you put a record out in 2021. Um, but just from the, what I read, kind of a quote from you about this new album was that you started. Did you start it two years ago or like and then did you like kind of, I guess, timeline wise, like where did this album come when it comes or was the other album already written way prior to that and it just came out in 2021 or. Um, yeah, you know, everyone had. Uh, everyone who had release plans during COVID, you know, really uh, had to think on the fly, you know, sure. so I had this album done right as COVID began, like it started 2020, this album was done, the other side album. And okay. uh, what I had to do was make the decision when everything shut down. I was like, well, if we're going to be stuck inside, I might as well just dole out singles, you know, right. for a time. so I doled out seven singles over a year. And then after that seven singles, you know, that year I dropped the album right at 20. Okay. That makes sense. It was, yeah. I was definitely exhausted. You know, I, I milked it to that point. And well, you kind of had to, I mean, it was like, okay, two weeks. And then it was a month and then it just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And if you have an album out, you don't want, I mean, I would imagine you'd want to tour it and really give it the proper support and release that it deserves, especially putting all that hard work into it. For so sure. It just kind of get lost in the ethos. I would imagine. Exactly. So that was my <laughs> attempt at keeping it in the ethos, you know, was doing it very slowly. So by the time it came out, I was already, you know, thinking about out the next album and uh, everything I was doing. We were already looking at, you know, New Mexico uh -huh. to go and, you know, expand our horizons. Um, okay. So, you know, it's sort of just the moment that was out, I was off to the races on the next, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the sense. same time, touring like crazy through all of it so yeah i know there's kind of, i mean you had a lot going on obviously during that time when you you took to go right and and do this album in new mexico like you want to talk about that at all or you want to talk about making a decision to go there and you know really well, working on this you know it, in the in a nutshell basically I'm recently married and we wanted to start somewhere fresh also i wanted to live somewhere that could you know help me write songs I needed some place that looked like a movie set, I usually said. And, uh, you know, we went on Zillow in 2021. And this was the first property we found. We flew out there. It was the first property we saw. It was as if we were guided to it. And as soon as we got there, we settled in. And, you know, I brought my engineer friends out. We built the studio, got the gear. And, um, and uh, you know, just over the course of a year and a half, we just buckled down and songs came out. And I chased them. And. And we put it all together. You know, it was one of those things that I, it was like such a huge vision, but to fulfill it, uh, you know, I knew it was going to be real tough. So look, you know, the fact that we did, you know, I already feel as though, you know, I'm completely satisfied. So just putting it out now is just the, you know, sort of the reward, you know, I'm already feeling in that place. For sure. I mean, I had a chance to hear the album. It's amazing. I, and to oh. like read about it saying that, you know, you know, co-writes, no big like studio, like all of that. Was that all? I mean, that must have been kind of the vision going into it. Just you yeah. wanted to strip back like that. Well, as I get older, you know, the one thing I want to do is leave things behind that are very, very pure to me. You know, the artists I love, Tom Waits, the Avid Brothers, you know, acts that like, you know, money doesn't matter. You know, the only thing that matters is, is, uh, you know, are you, are you as authentic as possible? And for me, you know, life is short, you know, and I just want to, I'm going to do that to the max. And I feel like that's almost the secret recipe to success as an indie artist, though, as well. You know, and if you can enchant yourself, you know, you'll have a better chance at, you know, enchanting someone else, they say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I was I'm going down that path and I feel like that's the path I'm meant I'm meant to be on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know uh, just based off what you read, I mean, um, really vulnerable album. I mean, I'm sorry to hear about your brother. Uh, I okay. also fight addiction and I'm. I mean, I've been doing it for a couple of years now and mm -hmm. just that whole that whole world is just so scary and it's so, um, you know, detrimental to, to families. I mean, I know firsthand of <laughs> what I've, you know, put my kids and wife through uh, and just having to kind of go through 
you know, living in life like that and, and, and trying to get better. And I'm just like, it breaks my heart to hear about, you know, reading about what you, what happened through you and your family. And yeah, um, I appreciate that, man. You know, at the end of the day, it just reinforces, you know, what I said earlier is, you know, just trying to, you know, keep it real and, uh, and, you know, and have no fear, you know, so as for a musician, I think it works well just because, you know, I think doubt kills way more dreams than failure ever will you know mm -hmm. so i almost feel a little more um invincible in a way yeah was it difficult to go in i mean to be vulnerable that vulnerable on this album was that something that or was it just like okay i'm gonna get this down and, and yeah it's heard. more of like i just don't even care anymore you know i'm just yeah. doing it yeah and it feels good you know i think that's what the people want though too they want honesty they want vulnerability they want they want to know what's going on when i posted the track list i had a couple like you know, like a couple old teachers and like old fans message me and be like, are you OK? What's going on? Like the song Losing My Mind. They're like, are you OK? I'm like, I'm like, listen, guys, you know, it's like I have to be able to express, you know, that's that's part of, you know, the thing. It doesn't have to be all jolly, jubilant songs. You know, they can be they can be real because it's almost like two negatives make a positive. If you can relate to someone, uh, then that is the magic feeling almost of upliftment. Um, so, you know, it's interesting, but, you know, I feel it's like what Bong Joon-ho said when he did Parasite. He <laughs> said, uh, the most, uh, the most creative is the most personal. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going for. Yeah. I feel like uh, now more than ever with, uh, just the social media and TikTok, and I feel like the stuff that works and that really does well or blows up for, for artists and people are, is just being the most authentic version of yourself. Like I've interviewed artists that are like, yeah, I had no idea this would do anything and then it it blows up because it's just people are relating very uh, you know, yeah. to, to the vulnerability and to the like they see themselves in the situation it's not like all the bells and whistles and big production and and everything else it's just like that person and them yeah it's almost like a reverse sort of paradox too it's you know it's like if you focus too hard on the other thing you know then you'll make a a track that just doesn't turn people on you know right if you focus yeah. hard on, you know, finding it and doing it and wanting, you know, this to do something, you know, it'll uh, a lot of the time it has the reverse effect, you know, so you really got to let go, you got to surrender and just, you know, do what comes natural. Yeah. With it, with this album, was it, did you feel like it was therapeutic to when you finished it? Like, oh, okay, I got this all out and off my chest or. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I feel that way after every album. But, you know, as I get older and the songs mean more. Uh, yeah, that feeling to the max just just uh, increases and, uh, you know, I'm um, feeling more satisfied than ever. And I'm thinking about the next one already writing songs for the next one. So, you know, it, uh, it's never ending. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine. Yeah. Once you get it done, you're already kind of thinking, OK, I got it. It sounds like you write a lot. I mean, to be able to be like, OK, this is out, but I'm already kind of working towards what I have coming up. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it just uh, it, uh, you know. At the end of the day, it feels like survival at this point, you know, mm -hmm. so I just got to be and I don't sit down and force myself to write. I just wait for it to come. But, you know, they come uh, in a way to where when it's time, I have enough songs there. And, uh, you know, uh, Miles Davis once said, don't abuse the gift. You know, so I just, <laughs> I, like I, just, I just try to set myself in good environments to where it's easy to come in. I like that. And you got some cool shows coming up. You're doing uh, some festivals and the bigger amphitheaters and then uh coming up here in the new future yeah, that's amazing and you just did a show right what a couple days ago oh yeah yeah it's been a busy spring and summer and uh we're really looking forward to what's coming up and i got some more big announcements uh happening you know in real time this month with more great shows and big opportunities happening so you know that's my favorite thing at the end of the day just being on stage and rocking rocking with the <laughs> yeah you got the record coming out what is it coming out on friday friday yeah, yeah friday doing a big release for it or like is it something that when you put out an album is it like yeah a party or you know, a big show or anything like that we used to all the time obviously for number three we didn't because it was covid but right on we're doing a uh we're doing a show on saturday night the day after release in winchester virginia mm -hmm. and it's sort of like a hometown stop for me because i'm in originally from martinsburg and so a lot of these uh you know people who were there from day one are able to come and and see the show so that'll be saturday that's going to be a big one and uh, and then on friday night of release well my wife and i'll probably just go get italian food you know <laughs> that, you that sounds like a perfect release night to me yeah 
yeah. that sounds good. I, that's something I would want to do. Just what? like, okay, yeah, go out with the family. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I appreciate your time today, Christian. Thank you so much, man, for for doing this, for taking the time to kind of chat. Hey, no, I appreciate you, man. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed um, your questions. I have one more for you before I let you go, though. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Aspiring artists. Hmm. Don't take no for an answer. Um, if you work harder than anyone else, you can get things done. Um, believe in your songs. Don't try to please other people. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just, you know, search for the good feeling and let that guide you. That's, that'll do the trick. Bring me the bad word.